Now, if you'd say oh. your name and your Sandra, birth information. Sandra Lee Sirio, born on December 16, 1945, at 4.34 p.m. in Cleveland, Ohio. Let's talk. Okay. So, you're into Tibetan Buddhism. It's, it's the light of my life. So, talk to me about it. It sings to my heart. I've taken bodhisattva vows and refuge. Mm -hmm. I've taken them when you had to take the classes at the Shambhala Center oh. in order to do them. They didn't just grant them to us. Well, yeah, there's yeah. different ways so to do it. Yeah. In the old days, they, they just gave a lot of people refuge. I've been to the stupa. Have you been to the great stupa? I haven't been to that, but I've been to many, many stupas. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Well, if you ever get to Colorado, I'll take you up there. It's beautiful. It has an energy. When uh, there was a sign when I went in the first time, and it says, "What does it say?" It says, "Liberates all who come here." And so I walked around in the um, circle that you're supposed to do, and I came to the end and I cried. It was just that profound. We have a stupid our center. Oh, do, oh, you do? Not a giant. Yeah, one, but you built one. Have you ever been to the one at Crestone? In is Colorado? it? Yeah, you know, I've been to Crestone. Is it Reggie Ray's? No, no just no, anybody. No, it's not Reggie Ray's. All right. It's uh, in fact, a woman that's a close friend of mine did it. So. And it it's below Crestone. Mm, that's um, fine. If you ever go there again, I want to see it. Yeah, look for the stupa. Okay. It's a large stupa. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Okay. So what kind of? practices are you doing with Buddhism? Well, I do um, meditation. I do shamatha vipassana. Um, that's what we say, do. This, uh, shamatha, I can understand. Tell me more about well, what type okay, of vipassana so, you do. Well, it's not so easy. No, but I mean, I just do a meditation practice. I do tonglin in it. Mm -hmm. um, I start out by dedicating the merit because I feel like I should. You usually do that at the end. Well, I know. I do it at the beginning. <laughs> Well, you can. That's okay. Matter. Usually there's an yeah, aspiration the right. at the beginning and then a dedication at the end. Right? Yeah, I mean, I just, it's a meditation practice and it's sometimes... Do you ever do any nundro? No, I don't. I don't well, you do don't have to. I'm just no. saying, that yeah. these are what, what are called the extraordinary pre preliminaries. Right, right. Because the first part of Dharma training is to start to, it's like, do you ever have babies? Do you ever have babies? I have children, yeah. Okay, so the, the cervix has to thin out. Right, right, right. Before the child can be born. It's the same thing with our obscurations. Mm. That, that they have to thin out so that we can see beyond, mm. uh, we can see through them mm -hmm. beyond their south and mm -hmm. stuff. And so that's why the, the nundra, which sounds kind of medieval, mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why it exists. And mm -hmm. You only have to do it if, if you find that you have trouble really meditating. Mm -hmm. and then you just have a, Thin them out enough, and then you go and do it. I mean, I had so, horrible oh, yeah. trouble doing it. I mean, I had to do all the nundro, and you know what it is. No, I really don't. Nundro is. Um, I spell it N Y N D R O. It's N G N. Oh, N G N. N G N. It's got an umlaut. So, okay. So. In Buddhism, there's two kinds of practices. There are purification practices mm -hmm. and then there are realization practices. Mm -hmm. In purification practices, is what's called the common preliminaries, which are the four thoughts that turn the mind to the wrong. You know that. Right. right? The, it, Human life is precious. Our life is impermanent. Right. Karma is unavoidable. Right. And we should be very careful. And then the last one is essentially something like you're never going to get all your books in a row in samsara. <laughs> right, right. Those are what are called the common preliminaries. The extraordinary preliminaries are 108,000 full, full prostrations in the ground. Yeah, right. 108,000. Uh, it's going to be a while. It's going to be a little while. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's okay. This is the way it is. Yeah. All right. I'm right in the middle of something. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll be back. <laughs> then 108,000 Rajasaka mantras, right. 108,000 mantras, uh -huh. 108,000 um, mandala offerings on a copper plate, mm -hmm. clouds of rice, and then 108,000 guru, uh, guru, guru yoga, and then refuge prayer, 108,000. Mm. I did all of that. And I went to my teacher and I said, okay, well, sir, I'm ready for advanced practice. He says, what should I do? And he said, do you want to, do you want to know what I would do if I were you, Michael? 
And I said, he doesn't speak any English. He's 95. I said, yes, Rim She says, I would do another number. <laughs> and so I did. Oh so I got up. I'm trying to tell you, I had, I had trouble learning to meditate. Mm -hmm. I meditated for 32 years. Mm -hmm. Sincerely, I never got anywhere mm -hmm. because I was not thinned out. I, I, but then mm -hmm. I finally got kind of thinned out. There's a, there are many kinds of vipassana, many kinds mm -hmm. of insight meditation, but the only kind in our lineage, I don't know what lineage you're in, unless you're in my lineage, is Kadru. Kadru. Oh, I don't know. It's more Shambhala or more Mahayana, I guess. Shambhala, yeah. oh, it's more more the it's basically, it's basically, yeah. basically Karmakaja. Yeah. And I don't know what the the new. Uh, uh, Trunkpa Trun Rinpoche taught me Shambhala mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. in 1974. Yeah. I was right. a chauffeur for a bit, and he took me in a room and actually right. taught it to me. So I'm just always. But what I'm trying to say is that. Insight meditation, there are dozens of kinds of it. It's right. mostly kind of an intellectual thing, but in the Mahamudra tradition, it, it can only be taught after you recognize the nature of the mind, and you can only recognize the nature of the mind by having a Lama who has recognized it help you, help point it out to you. Mm -hmm. and so when you say you do the Pashma, I doubt that you've had a, that kind of teacher, but maybe you have. Yeah, well, I mean, at Naropa we had, we had meditation teachers, and we went on, we, as part of our program, we had to go on retreats mm -hmm. for 30 days, and um, so I don't know if I am a traditional Buddhist in that sense of following, I don't know if it's the, I mean, the more traditional lines. I think I'm probably more Shambhala. Uh, and I do Tong Lin, you know what that is. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yes, and I have monkey mind when I meditate. My mind is goes all over the place. You I, just have to relax. Yeah, I know. Let the monkey mind. Right? Yeah, yeah, the I'm monkey mind. anywhere. Right, right. It's a monkey. It's everywhere. And, um, but don't, don't think anything of it. the idea. Yeah. It's, it doesn't have to be distracted. Mm -hmm. Yes, right, right. Well, that's great to see an astrologer who's doing some dharma work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I'm not as advanced as you are, and maybe you don't like that term advanced, but maybe you give a lot more energy to it. I think about it a lot, but I think you practice your I've, more... I've worked, yeah, what I've a done time. is for a long, long time, yeah, but I've yeah. worked under direction of the Tibetan Lamas. Yes, yes. I've right. been doing Mahamudra 10-day teaching for 30 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, every, every year yeah. for 10 days, yeah. pretty vigorous. Yeah. So I'm not trying to say I'm, I'm no more Dharma than you. I'm, but you do. I'm trying to, <laughs> but it's all right. But I'm kind of trying to find out what you do know and to see if there's anything I have to say. I think one of the best things we could do would be to look at your your Hindu Center chart. Can right. Do that? Yeah. Let's do let's that. Do that. Let's do that. And then because the Helio chart is really the Dharma chart, so I'm going to let you do. Yes. You I'm happy to do it. Don't you put in your name. Like you tab in or you enter or you What's tab? I never mind, oh, I got it. Tab. Just don't hit enter when you're all done. You have to, when you get the, the place in, then turn it over. Then we get the atlas and let me do it. I've been losing data. How are you? And we have to do all this over again. Yeah, just com comma Ohio. What happened? We lose the cursor? You'll be here, let me put it back up there. Okay, sorry. I probably did that. All right, now. It's, it's Eastern Standard. Yeah, well, it figures it out. Uh, just use Cleveland. Yeah. yeah, so let's see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, that Mercury-Pluto conjunction. Oh, Does that that's look an, like the right one? That's my natal chart, correct. Okay, so the way I look at it is an open wheel because I want to see the patterns. What interests me... But what ascendant is it giving me? I'm not going to worry oh, about that. I mean, it's not I, the right one. This, this isn't Helio. 
This is no, it's no, not. It's getting, Geo. I'm get, but You're getting the, there. The Senate there is right. Right, right. right. Okay. What I'm saying is, all right. I'm not. I don't want to look at the Senate, but I okay. want to look at are the patterns. In this okay. case, you have a, what's called a basket. You know. Yeah. It's very receptive. Mm. But, but what I want to see is what you are. This is the chart. Right. Of the Earth taking a snapshot of the solar system. Mm -hmm. it, it's what's called the karma chart. Mm -hmm. It's how we appear in the right. things that we're, we're stuck and, with. Right, right, and we have to but, work with. You see, this is a lot more uh, standard than this. That That is your dharma chart. Mm -hmm. and, and I, let me just look back and forth here. Yeah, I think you don't know that you have a Mercury Pluto. Yeah, I saw it yesterday when I put my helio in. I was surprised. Yeah, well, it, these are the things that, when we work through our yeah. karma, uh -huh. this is what we end up with. And this is also, since you're kind of a karma student, when we are reborn, our karma, you know, as a Buddhist, we don't we don't believe in an Atman or eternal soul. We believe that the, the personality is lost at every death. Sure. But this is what moves forward, these mm. desires and this mm. urge. This this amount of space is an enormous amount. There's a, we try to fill the space, so, mm -hmm. so there's a tremendous drive or urge. We, it's not so much any special place, it's, there's an urge. Urge to mm -hmm. do something or to find something or be something. So what, what I, I have a daughter that has this kind of chart. Really? Is she the singer? She is. Mm -hmm. Is she always traveling? She's always meeting. She can't meet enough people. Mm -hmm. She can't. She can't go enough mm -hmm. places because of this great emptiness, right? Mm -hmm. She's trying to fill it, mm -hmm. and she's a wonderful mm -hmm. girl. And she, you mm -hmm. know, she has a we babysit her five year old. Mm -hmm. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. Five year old is wow. a genius of some wow. kind. Wow. Because both her, her husband and herself, who's mm -hmm. uh, not her husband anymore, but mm -hmm. just, yeah. Wow. Well, that was too bad, but yeah. anyway, yeah. that's life. That's life, yeah. Yeah, so I think you'd want to get to know this chart. Mm -hmm. Especially as a Dharma person. I, I believe this is the Dharma that's yeah. pushing you. Right. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. did, did I give you a card? I should give you a card. Okay. Thank you. And then your books are on there. I was I went to Spirit Grooves. Oh, you've been there. Okay, so there's yeah. tons of books. There's like yeah. forty some Dharma books. No, it's amazing. Or if you ever have any questions that you okay. don't know, no answers of uh, a Dharma training. I know the beginning stuff mm -hmm. pretty darn well, mm -hmm. and I've actually done everything right. that I had to do, right. Right? as opposed to mm -hmm. coming up with some idea of not doing. It. All right. Well, I think I'm going to use this as inspiration to uh, you know what. I'm going to use this as inspiration to um, deepen my meditation practice. Well, and, and you're sitting shamatha, right? Yeah. yeah. And how is that going? Well, monkey mind. What can I say? You know. And how's it going? I, yeah. But what are you doing? Yeah, shamatha is basically breathing. If you're know? having trouble with shamatha, you need to look in your life and see what parts of life that naturally teach you concentration that you love to do. Like some people like golf or chess or is there any duplicate bridge, looking at charts, that's all concentration. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because the way that I finally understood it was that my teacher one point said those of you who are use computers like a programmer, which I was, yeah. have a leg up on other people because you already have concentration. And I've been mm -hmm. trying to do shamatha for thirty two years mm -hmm. and not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And the moment he said that, I realized I was trying to salt the salt. I already was, you know, recorded all the recorded music of Lenity, all movies, documented all existing movies, created huge databases that mm -hmm. took intense. I already was expert at concentration. Mm -hmm. Here I was trying to concentrate when I already, mm -hmm. and that was my problem. Yeah. So, okay. If you, so that if you're sitting there trying to concentrate and it's not, producing results, find the area like like you just said, mm -hmm. doing charts or whatever where you're good at and then start to do it right there. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It doesn't have to be on the cushion. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you if you like Tong Lin, I wrote a book on Tong Lin but introduced a, 
an alternate hmm. version of Tang Nan that Rinpoche accepted in front of a huge group of people as being authentic. And basically, that idea is to begin to look at your through the day at your reactions. Right, right. Whatever happens, like the phone rings, someone comes mm -hmm. in the office. Mm -hmm. Be in the present moment. Like no, it's not so much a no? first. No, let's say somebody hurts your feelings. It's easy mm -hmm. to do it around oh, here. Yeah. Uh, you look at your reaction and realize and own it 100%, mm -hmm. and then drop it. But right. do this till you get down to, oh, I don't like that tie, I don't like his nose. Mm -hmm. All this stuff is an enormous waste of energy that if we start to, to tone it back and just come up mm -hmm. with an appropriate natural, like, oh, well, you don't have to, I don't care if he likes me or she likes me or doesn't like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You start toning that back, that's the fastest way I know to, to, to remove uh, obscurations. Is that book online? It is. I'm going to just show it to you so you can recognize it. I want to it. recognize it. I want to download that for sure. Let's see. Yeah, these are some of my Dharma books. Uh, this is it. Well, the Alchemy right of Reaction. Okay, got it. All uh, right. And I think Thank that you. this is something you can do while you do readings, while you do anything. And even after a few weeks, mm -hmm. because you start, you're starting to, to remove, you're getting all that energy back that you invested in, like wincing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, mm -hmm. now I have to do that. Oops, here she comes again. Right? That kind of stuff. That you don't have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. I don't want to take too much time because That's of fine. other people. It's nice to see you. I really appreciate it. I do. More than you realize. Thank you. Well, thank you. Free to write me, email me anytime. Okay. Okay? Okay, I will. Okay, thank see you. you later.